Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where entrepreneurs and professionals publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of business spotlights across the country and even in your town. Joining me today are John Perry and Jay Cruz. They're the founders of Hapa Hawaiian Grill in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're here to listen to their story. John and Jay, welcome to the program. Thank you. Hi, buddy. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for uh, bringing us on. It's my pleasure. John, Jay, uh, one of you tell us about the, uh, a little bit about Hapa Hawaiian Grill and when you got started. Uh, Jay, you want to take this? Sure. Well, um, we got started, we opened up in February of 2019, but the, 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 the plan and the inception started around two, four, 2014. John and I met um, uh, through mutual friends and um, I'm, uh, I run hotels and I've, I'm, I'm a chef by trade. So, uh, we, we started talking and we decided to, to, to open a, a Hawaiian restaurant, a, a plate lunch takeout style like we do in, in Hawaii. And cause there's not nothing like that here in, in, in Pittsburgh. And because we both love to eat, <laughs> I know I can speak for myself. You can't find the food here. So it's, and there's a lot of, uh, Polynesian, Filipino, uh, in, you know, people here in, in, in Pennsylvania and Pittsburgh that, 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 that really needed it, you know? And so it's, it started, it's been a labor of love. We finally opened in February. I wish we would have opened four years ago, but we, it, it, things happen for reasons. And, and here, here we are. Yeah, I definitely want to get to that. But before that, I want to know, Two Hawaiians originally from Hawaii in Pittsburgh. Did you guys know each other? How did you guys first meet and connect? And what inspired you to bring the Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian restaurant here to Pittsburgh? You know what? That's a that's a really good question. And so we we came here. Um, you know, we we married girls that are from from the mainland. Uh, so in essence, at least that's a roundabout way of how I got here to Pittsburgh. Um, but Jay and I, we met, uh, actually, my wife was going to a interview, it was a job interview, and it happened to be at uh, a ho the hotel that Jay was the general manager of. And like normally before interviews, she gets all like worked up, right? She gets all like starts to freak out a little bit. But when she goes in the interview, she just kills it. So she was kind of going through her process of getting worked up. And Jay uh, kind of noticed like, hey, you know what? This, this lady might need some help, uh, you know? So he was just being who he is, you know, with his aloha spirit. He went up to talk to, to my wife, Karen, and, um, and it calmed her down. So, so Jay has a, has a way of um, really connecting with people and to me, it was, it's a gift. So, so when my wife came home, I asked her, how'd the interview go? She said, it went great. And, you know, she met this guy that was, you know, she was going through a process of, you know, almost freaking out. Uh, so he came over, calmed her down. I'm like, oh, that's, that's awesome. And I think the, it might've been that following weekend um, or the, we had a mutual friend uh, here that was having a wedding. And so just so happened, you know, I went with my wife and Jay was there cooking the food for the, for the luau. And huh. my wife, my wife pointed him out and said, Hey, that's the guy from the hotel she said, you need to go meet him. And so that's how we met. Um, and, you know, I kind of learned over the years, I've been in business for over 25 years and I've kind of learned along the way that my wife has this, and I think a lot of women has this gift of intuition, right? Where they just kind of get a sense for people. And so she would let me know about certain people that were where she was getting red flags about or, or otherwise, right? So in the beginning, I wouldn't listen to her. 
when she was sending me red flags and I had to get clobbered on the head. So I learned from that uh, to value her instincts. So when she gives her blessing, like anybody that I look to do business with, you got to get by my wife first. If you can get by her, then we can talk. So she already gave Jay the blessing and uh, she was right. So then when does the inspiration come in or the light bulb come on and the idea, hey, Hawaiian grill, let's do it. Like, tell me about how that got started. Well, I, I know from, uh, you know, just with getting to know Jay more, we, we kind of came, you know, we had a common dream of, you know, starting a Hawaiian restaurant uh, here in the mainland. We've lived here for a long time. And so it was just a dream that's been kicking around for a lot of years. And it just took time for it to kind of cultivate. And um, so when we finally did, you know, find the right location and, you know, got the build out done, we opened, uh, we opened our doors in February of, of, of 2020 of this year. So we have one month of just, you know, of good, you know, good projections and then COVID hit. And so it's been um, just interesting to make pivots along the way. So we've learned a lot. We've grown a lot as, you know, as business owners. And um, so, yeah, we're, we're continuing to make some pivots. I definitely want to know about those pivots and, and how this pandemic's affected you as it, as it has just thousands of restaurants across the country. Absolutely, absolutely decimated. But tell me, I want to learn more about the restaurant. Hawaiian Grill sounds exciting. I'm in the suburbs of Chicago. I don't know of anywhere to get food like that. Tell us about your vision and what you now are offering uh, Pittsburgh folks. What was your vision? What was the kind of food? What, what's the type of experience you're offering there? Well, I mean, the experience is, it comes from just, you know, sharing our culture, right? Sharing the, not just the food, um, but just who we are as people. And just having a culture of leading with aloha, you know, we, we call it the aloha spirit. And it's basically just loving on people um, and so the food and the people that, um, are a part of the organization, that's one of the prerequisites that we agreed upon when we first started is you have to have that aloha. Otherwise you can't, you can't play. Um, and that's, you know, that's something that we got to stick to because it's more than just the food experience. It's how you feel when you go there. It's, are you being served with aloha or not? That matters to us. Jay, your background as a chef, I'd imagine you're behind a lot of the recipes. Tell us about the food. What are the kinds of, I, I have no idea here being here in Chicago, not having a Hawaiian restaurant to go to, what kind of food, uh, how are the options presented? What, give me, tell me a little bit about the experience having never been there. So the, the food is, Polynesian, but it's, but it's, we call it a Hawaiian takeout style, Hawaiian plate lunch style. So, but there's a, a mixture of, there's some Filipino uh, style, there's Japanese, all the influences that, that have been in Hawaii for a, a long time. So one of our, one of our dishes is a big dish is, is, is a Japanese influence dish, which is chicken katsu, which is, uh, and I'm sure many people listening have heard, heard of that, but um, people, that's one of our biggest sellers. Um, and, and it's just a Japanese influence dish that is, is we make it in Hawaii and, and, and it, we can't keep it on the shelves. <laughs> we can't keep it on, uh, you know, it, it just sells, sells out. Uh, our Kalua pork, which is an we, we do a, we don't have an emu out here which we, we can't cook the pig in the in, in the ground you know so we're doing it in the oven style so but people are you know so how I make it um, you know that's another big seller you know so I cook it with cabbage and we serve it with rice and potato mac salad which is a basic uh, plate lunch style um, so the the menu and 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 how I was taught I, I I've cooked in, in a place like this in, in Hawaii. And um, as I, as I moved out here, like, like John said, we, 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 we married a, um, uh, an American, you know, a, a, 
a woman from here in, 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 in this area. And when we moved out, I moved out here 22 years ago and uh, from the big island and, and there was no food like, like what we want. So my first job as a chef, I, they, they, they had, I had just started at a place in, in, called Conneaut Lake in, in Pennsylvania as a chef. And the first event was a luau. And when, when they said, well, you could just take the luau from last year and kind of, and, and I looked at it, and I said, this is not a luau. And I was, to, I was, so I put a real luau. My daughter came from California to visit me anyways. And so she danced the hula. So we gave them the experience and people were just, they just were taken by it. So I said, I'm on to something, you know, we're onto something here. We need to, we need to um, bring Hawaii to people because a lot of people can't go to Hawaii. So by bringing Hawaii to people, um, like John said, that, that, that experience, the aloha, aloha spirit, you know, and that's, you know, everything's, that's what it's all about. Now you guys are making me hungry. And, and the closest I have to go is like the grocery for some poke. <laughs> and so it's on I, our menu. That's we, on need, our menu. we need that in the <laughs> Chicagoland area for sure. So we need a hop a Hawaiian grill now, but now you opened in February of 2020. I can feel for you because I, I, I do live events also. And my last live event was exactly February 29. And we got through it, sold out the event, had a thousand people at it. It was a, a live kickboxing event. And literally we got by, by the skin of our teeth because just like two weeks later, the whole country shut down and we were just decimated. And we were just thankful that we at least got our event through. Tell me what happened. You guys opened what, beginning of February? When in February? How was your opening? Take, first of all, tell me about how your opening was and how you were welcomed in February and when it was in February. Oh, so we opened in the middle of February. Um, and so we didn't really get to a chance to do a grand opening, uh, but we did a soft launch with some, you know, just friends and family and people just to kind of test our systems. And that went over really well. And then we just opened the doors uh, immediately after that with the plan of doing a grand opening 30 days after we open. So when COVID hit, you know, everything did shut down. So we didn't even get a chance to do our grand opening yet. Um, and we don't know when that's going to happen. And we had a, a, a friend of ours really help put together some marketing pieces and she's a you know she's on the news locally here and also lived in Hawaii uh, so she wanted to help us out and that was that was great but we didn't get a chance to implement it yet um, but the reception's been phenomenal from the day that we opened and just a testament to Jay his recipes and just the way he's been able to train uh, and develop our staff yeah, people have been loving the food from the beginning. And, you know, we did get a lot of good press, good write-ups. Uh, so that's been helpful. But, uh, yeah, we did have to shut down the dining room. Um, and then, you know, the concept is kind of built. It's fast casual, right? It's the quick serve concept. Uh, and it's built primarily on takeout and, and delivery. So, you know, nowadays you got Uber Eats, you got you know, DoorDash and all these other uh, third-party delivery services. So that was definitely one of the pivots uh, we needed to make right away. Uh, and then something that, you know, we're, we're still pivoting, like I mentioned, um, you know, we started uh, offering at Hapa like different cultural dishes, right? So just kind of going back to the story of just the name of Hapa, you know, that gave us the opportunity to not just introduce like, you know, foods that are influenced from Hawaii, but other cultures, other, you know, island cultures where we can experiment with different special, different dishes. And so that's been a really huge success for, uh, especially like the Filipino special right now is just, you know, it, it's been, you know, selling out pretty well. Uh, we do want to bring in the raw materials to be able to do like an authentic Hawaiian plate special. So 
you know, that's coming soon. And, uh, but again, that's just a testament to Jay's uh, ability as a chef and everything that he's ever made that I've ever tried was just phenomenal. So yeah, I have confidence in what, whatever he makes is going to be good. So the good news is you were designed for takeout and carry out more so than dine in. Uh, so what kind of pivots did you have to make when, when they said, Hey, we're shutting down and no, you know, no in restaurant dining. Uh, what kind of changes did you make to kind of pivot and adjust to that new climate? Um, Jay, if you want to share that, sure. that would be great. Sure. Since we were already set up for takeout, we just pushed that out even more. Um, we, we posted it on our website. Um, we, 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 you know, partnered up with Grubhub Uber Eats even more. And they do uh, probably 30 to 50% of our business. We even delivered ourselves, you know, just to people that had called, you know, do you deliver? And well, we don't really deliver, but we started to, you know, we, we just decided that, you know, if we, they, people can't come to Hoppa because we're, we're located in, 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 in the city. Um, uh, especially with the city shutting down, not a lot of people are going to work. Our captive audience that we were supposed to have, which was the, the <laughs> PPG arena and, you know, the different businesses, local businesses and whatnot, um, were, were, were no longer there. So what we needed to do was either take it to them somehow, which is how we use Grubhub and Uber Eats, or uh, streamline our pickup, you know, our takeout, and then, you know, we've been known to deliver food ourselves, you know, and it's just something that we have to have to do to, to make this change. Um, and we haven't even been open a year and there's always one or two people that come in um, that's, that says, I haven't even heard of you. I'm glad you're here, you know, and, and if we can just, you know, just keep that coming and, 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 you know, we have our regulars uh, that, that, that just love us. And we even have people, we had a guy that, that drives down from Cleveland. Some come from Johnstowns. I mean, we're talking about hours away that have just to come for the food because there's nothing like this um, um, in the area. So, so I know um, that since you ha weren't, open that long you don't really have much of a baseline to compare to but i understand that you know with just takeout only it's still very difficult to to make the money you need to make without that dine in without the dining room how have you felt you know having to operate with take carry out take out and delivery only how is that uh how do you feel that's really held you back from the revenues that you expected uh, so, you know, we, we have other income streams that, you know, as part of our business plan from the beginning, but just during COVID, um, things just kept changing. So one of the big, like our big ticket item is catering for luau's. So we have, um, you know, family, uh, friends of ours that they do a really great Hawaiian, like, you know, hula show. Um, with the fire knife dancing and things like that. So we had agreed to partner up and really offer people a unique, a real authentic Hawaiian Polynesian luau experience that you would normally have to fly to Hawaii and pay, you know, a hundred, couple hundred bucks for at a hotel. So it was something unique that we didn't get a chance to launch yet. And so we're pretty excited for when things kind of open up again uh, cause that's something we're definitely missing. Um, and the other, the other pivot that we've kind of had to make is we just had to figure out how to get the food into people's hands, right? Cause if they're not coming downtown for whatever reason, well, we meet, we need to adjust. So like Jay mentioned with, you know, we deliveries and kind of like select communities where they got together with their neighbors and they all put in orders. So then, you know, it made it worth our time to go drive it out there and take the food to them. Um, another, another pivot that we 
started exploring and we'd love to do more of is, um, and this is all kind of pertaining to if there's like sports, a sports season. Um, so we got connected with a local university and started uh, catering like pregame meals, postgame meals, after practice meals for um, the women's volleyball team at the University of Pittsburgh. And we'd love to do more of that uh, with more sports programs. Uh, and then also um, with, the, with the hospital industry and with doctor's offices, you know, with my wife being in pharmaceutical sales, there's another audience there that, you know, we know we need to capitalize more of. And that's changed too, just the way they do business because they can't go into the doctor's offices anymore. So everything's, you know, they've made pivots to the online Zoom you know, to deliver the information to the doctors, but they still, they still cater food. As long as, you know, we can, we can take it to the doctor's offices on time, they can still do that. So, you know, just thinking outside the box and doing, it's, it's not business as usual this year. So it's, we just had to adjust. It's a real brutal reminder of how linked this all is. The restaurant industry, catering to live events. I have colleagues in the live event industry, entertainers, industry decimated, live events shut down, not happening, and how that affects catering and your business and that revenue stream for you. So absolutely difficult. A couple of questions that, that my fellow business owner and restaurant owner audience would like to know. How have your vendors and uh, landlords been have they been very understanding and cooperative and banding together working with you to for to, to survive or has it been difficult tell me a little bit about what it's like for you guys well, so i think what makes us a little bit unique um at least from the uh the landlording side of things is um you know we own the building and you know we we have our own money invested and we have uh another investor that, you know, invested with us on the real estate side. So um, we've been able to be flexible, you know, for the restaurant, because the goal is for the restaurant to uh, not just survive, but to thrive in this, in this environment. And nobody knows when things are going to go back to normal, or if it ever will go back to normal. So, you know, we've learned a lot in the brick and mortar space. Um, and we've learned, okay, what other income streams that's, that we can do uh, to potentially, you know, help ourselves in this time. Another big question I get from my, my viewers, the, the latest trends of like uh, DoorDash, Grubhub, delivery, third-party delivery services. Remember when Groupon came on board, everybody loved what they were about. People flocked to Groupon, but then at the end of the day, business owners were a little dissatisfied with how they made you cut your prices in half. Then they took half of that half and it wasn't really a, 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 it didn't end up being a great move for business owners unless they knew how to use it to get new customers in the door, like just front end customers. How have the delivery services been for you guys as far as fees go? Are they reasonable? What's been your experience with them? Jay, you want to take that well, one? Yeah. Um, so the the fees are reasonable, and and the fees are are, are tiered, um, such where you get what you pay for. You know, if you uh, so, but as far as them. Um, bringing us because uh, they do some advertising for us too on their platforms and they've helped bring in new customers and um, the, the goal is not to try to steal business from everyone you know we just want a little piece of the, the, the you know we just want a, our share and so what what we wanted to do is just to get like getting Hoppa into people's hands and and Grow Hub Uber Eats are, are doing a real good job at, at that. And then some of these guys are still going through that platform, but ordering and picking up themselves. It, you know, it's, it's just, I'm seeing different changes, you know, or, or they have ordered from Grubhub 
and then they'll sometimes they'll just call call us and just call straight to us and just pick up themselves uh um so they're using both us grubhub uber eats they're using all the different platforms but the 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 systems the third party uh delivery services have been really easy to work with and, and they want our business and because a lot a lot of people are losing their jobs out there and and they're offering jobs you know more more deliveries more people are being able to work as well so it's uh you know being in in this industry it's it's been it's it, you know, sometimes you can't really sleep at night, you know, and, it, you know, um, I also run hotels. So the hospitality industry as, as a whole has, has taken a, a hit. Um, restaurants, um, I have friends that have restaurants that, that unfortunately are trying to make the pivots, you know, following suit. But I, I, I have friends that have, have, have had to close their restaurant and they'll never, never open back up. That's really, that's definitely really, really hard to hear. And, and I appreciate your attitude because at the end of the day, we all share customers, you know, we're not all going to eat, you know, uh, uh, tacos every day. We're not going to eat, you know, uh, sub sandwiches every day, but we we're going to do a cycle of stuff that we want to eat. And then just being in that little cycle and, and getting, you know, a visit a week from a customer and then building that customer base. What, what more could we ask for? Absolutely. Yeah. So I really like that. So, uh, as you mentioned, it's more than just surviving, but thriving in this environment. And you've had some successes. What do you see? Uh, are, are you like your top um, revenue generating uh, things that are working for you today um, that you can count on? Uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, the, the, the top revenue generate you know is def, def right now is a takeout but we john and i have we're we haven't been able to open all our revenue streams and we've been um reaching out to the local hawaiians here uh and and and, and the polynesians about what they would like to have so it, it, the the back and forth the feedback is is so one of the things that we really want to, and, and we're, we're going to, um, we're in the process of doing it right now is, is having a little retail business items you cannot get from Hawaii. You can't get here, but you can only get from Hawaii that we're, we're going to import it in and we're going to start. So, and that's going to, number one, it's going to, like, like I said, uh, people can't go to Hawaii, but we can bring it to them, you know, and as far as, uh, our, our, our biggest uh, revenue generator right now um, is, is the specials that we're running. You know, it, we're just like uh, the, that too, that's this Saturday, we're having a Filipino plate special and it's just something basic. It's just uh, pork adobo, pan sit, uh, lumpia and, and rice and, and, we asked for pre-orders and we've already pre pre-ordered over 20, and, but it doesn't just bring in 20 orders. It brings in uh, 20 people that order a lot of different things, you know, and they get to try all the different things off the menu. And, and we are really finding a lot of success with that running our specials because um, like if I go out to eat somewhere, I'll go to the same place and I'll order the same thing every time. But um, uh, some of these guys are coming that are regulars. They do order the same, but I'm trying to get them to try some of the other different things. Um, and once they do, you know, then 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 you have them eating five or six different things off of a menu that are that, and they're regulars. Then they don't have to go to five to six different places. They could just come here and have five different styles of food. It, 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 I don't know if that makes any sense. John, Jay, <laughs> before I ask you my last question, I'm, uh, although you're going through these challenges now with COVID and opening up like literally weeks before the whole country shuts down and, and really changes the whole ball game for everybody, are you able to keep your eye on the 
big picture or the prize. Tell me a little bit about your, your dreams of the future of Hapa Hawaiian Grill. You thinking franchising, tell me your dreams. Franchising for sure. <laughs> uh, and that's something that, you know, we kind of been taking some initial steps to move in that direction. Uh, but also just kind of drilling down on our actual build out, you know, finding out what's been working, what do we actually need? And, you know, and the we did, um, you know, we, we built a really big kitchen. And so the pluses and minuses of it is we built the kitchen to be able to, to handle all the catering and things like that. Plus the day-to-day -day business operations. Uh, and, you know, we found, we've learned that we don't need as big of a kitchen. Uh, what we really do feel like we need is outside seating and, and a, a takeout window or drive up window, you know, with, so that's, that's the pivot that we're going to be making in the future um, is we're just going to continue to adjust and make pivots as if the government's not going to come to save us, right? Because they're not going to print enough money to save everybody. They can't do it. So we're really in this by ourselves, you know? So the first round of PPP that went through, that was gone in like a week. So we weren't ready uh, at that time. Um, and then come to find out it was supposed to be for small businesses. It went to a lot of big businesses. So, you know, we take the mindset of whether the government's going to be there to help us or not, we're going to do everything that we can to help ourselves because we're not going to quit. I'm really glad to hear that you're thinking franchise because as you describe your restaurant, I want to go to it and I want to, I want to see it here in the Chicago suburbs. So I, I'm hoping that, uh, that everything works out for you and the country comes back together, puts a lid on this whole C-19 business. Uh, but for folks listening right now, and if they want to learn more, maybe they want to order from you online or uh, learn more and maybe come visit you and, and drive from driving distance to, come, to go see you. How do they find you and Hapa Hawaiian Grill to connect with you and learn more? Uh, you can definitely go to our website. Uh, it's hapahawaiiangrill.com. That's hapa, H-A-P-A, -A, hawaiiangrill.com. Uh, if you want to see the menu, just, it's hapahawaiiangrill.com forward slash menu. Um, or you can call the store. Uh, the number is 412 uh, and you can follow us on Facebook. It's at Hoppa Hawaiian Grill. John, Jay, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to share your story with my audience. I really enjoyed talking to you and learning about Hoppa Hawaiian Grill and, and your venture. I wish you continued success for the grill and for all of your customers. Thanks for having us. So much, Mark. We appreciate you having us. This segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where business owners, entrepreneurs, and professionals publish to grow their businesses and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. Join me next time on my next Expert Spotlight. I'm Mark Imperial. Take care.